Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand for day 286 of 365. I had to double check there. Of 365 days of Bible reading, we're only two weeks away from being at 300 days to go. A milestone that I hope that you're, you are as excited as I am about reaching Today, let's have a look at what scriptures we're going to be reading in the descriptions as always, and then we'll get into our brews for today. Psalm 119, verse 25 to 32. 2 Thessalonians verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 12. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1 to chapter 29, verse 23. So those are our scriptures, and if that was hard to follow, check it out in the descriptions on every platform as, platform as per usual. Let's talk brews today and get some coffee in my mush. Today we are trying for the final time our Pinnacle Coffee here from Hummingbird in our espresso format. Got the old espresso machine going. It took me uh, two or three times to get the dialing just right. So I feel like I've got a really good brew here on the espresso machine. So let's give it a try and see if it beats our 6.9 on the last couple of days. Cheers. You know what? I actually really like that. It's sweet. It's well-rounded. It's not going to go up past an 8, but definitely a 7.3, 7.4. Let's run it up to a 7.5 and give it a 7.5. The aftertaste, lovely chocolatey, malty flavor in there. It's quite nice. I do like it and highly recommend. You should actually give you should you should give this one a go. It's in the supermarkets, most supermarkets at the time of recording. It may only be around for a limited time. So if you're doing this on the first time round of recording this, give it a try. That is it though for the brews, and we're done tomorrow. Super seven store bought candle coffee. I'm so excited about that. But before we get there, let's get through today's Bible, the reason that we are here. We all, every single one of us, face temptation, sin, difficulties, but at the same time, we also face hopes and desires. At times, we can feel like the psalmist who says that he laid low in the dust in terms of the way that he was feeling. As you read the psalm and all the psalms, the ruthless rawnessness of the psalmist is an encouragement to me to be honest with God. Not just honest with God, but raw around my emotions and my mental space. In every season, I found that the more honest I am with God, the more at peace that I feel. Whether it's about financial, emotional, emotional, physical, external problems or confusion, whatever the pressures are that I'm facing, if I'm very honest with God about it, I'm way more at peace because I know that God is in control. When we internalize our challenges, we begin to feel the pressure of all the external things. So get the internal external through prayer. Be raw, be honest with God and allow him to shoulder your burdens and watch as he sets your heart free. Okay, it's time for a new book. And it does feel like cheating to call this a new book because it's just part two of Thessalonians. But you'll find out in this book that it's very different, yet very similar to 1 Thessalonians. Again, this book is a continuation of the first letter, written by Paul and possibly Silas and Timothy as well. Both the letters give Paul's answers to some pretty basic problems disturbing the church and the Christians in Thessalonica. The major themes of the letters are living pure and holy lives in Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and the events preceding and accompanying the, Christ, the return of Christ. Now, this book is all about the blessed hope of the return of Jesus Christ. Now, this is Paul's very clear and very blatant book around what will happen regarding how Jesus is coming back again. Notice that in Paul's, uh, notice, sorry, I want you to notice in this book, Paul's instruction is clear. Work and wait for his return. The second coming of Christ is actually mentioned 318 times in the 260 chapters of the New Testament. So it's a huge part of our faith. And for some reason, we don't really talk about it that much. So as you read this book, consider what you believe about Jesus's return, because he is coming back and we must be ready. Finally, today, we get to the book of Jeremiah with one of the most quoted pieces of scripture and possibly, in fact, most probably one of the most quoted promises of God in all of scripture. You know it is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah was facing many false prophets like a dude named Hananiah. Jeremiah says in chapter 28 verse 9, it'll come up on screen, the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. 
Obviously, Hananiah's prophecies didn't come true because God didn't actually send Hananiah. Jeremiah's prophecies, however, did. And what happens is the people of God go into exile as Jeremiah had warned. Notice what Jeremiah tells them, though. He tells them to seek the peace and prosperity to, uh, for the city in whichever city that God sends them to in their exile. He encourages them to pray for the people and the prosperity of the city. I think that's something we should be doing too, to pray for our people and our nations and to pray for the prosperity of our nations as well. Why? Because when our nations prosper, we prosper too. So what can you pray into for your nation, whatever nation you're in around the world, whether you're listening or watching? I want to encourage you to pray for peace and to pray for prosperity. Three, two, Verse one. of the day. 2 Thessalonians 1.4 is our verse of the day today. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. My question is this, would Paul boast about your perseverance and, and your faith through your persecution? For me, I reckon some days I could say yes to that and others probably not. So let's get to work. Let's get to work at persevering and increasing our faith through whatever persecution we face in our day. And that is it for the Daily Brew today. Day 286 of 365 days to go. Just under two weeks until we hit 300 days of Bible reading. A massive thank you for following along. No matter where you are around the world, I'm praying for you today that God would speak to you and reveal more of himself through the word of God as you continue to read it and pull it apart. A massive thank you to all of you on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of our other audio podcast platforms. Thank you for following the podcast and rating it. And to you on YouTube for subscribing and clicking the bell so you never miss a devotional. Feel free to give this video a like if you've enjoyed this devotion as well. That is it though for today. Come back tomorrow. We finish another set of seven days. I'm looking forward for my store-bought can or coffee. At the moment here in New Zealand at the time of recording, they are releasing new cans of coffee like it's nobody's business. So we've got a lot to choose from. I'm excited to show you what I found tomorrow. Come back tomorrow for that. And of course, for another day of Bible reading, which to be honest, is the main reason that we're here anyway. Until then though, that is it for today. If it's a start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you tomorrow back here on The Daily Brew.